Well, hello. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today, uh, we're doing, uh, we're not going to the lake. I'm not doing an install video. Uh, where we're going to cover some uh, cover some cool stuff for for um, you know newer jet skiers or first time jet skiers. I think you guys could really benefit. Uh, I kind of use this checklist before I go. Um, I'm very forgetful, so I have to have something uh, at least on my phone or something I can I can check off before we hit the lake. Because um, really, if you're towing and you know you're hooking everything up, you're ultimately responsible, especially if you're taking your family with you. Because Everybody's gonna look at you if you do something wrong or forget something. So uh, yeah, here's the, the top 10 things that you should have in your checklist before hitting the water. Let's go. Number one, you gotta check your straps and your chains. Uh, so pretty much, you know, from the, the jet ski in the back of the back transom to the, uh, to the trailer, um, I use uh, straps. Uh, they're not ratchet straps. Uh, they're called transom straps, AKA slap downs. Um, they're my favorite way to do it. Ratchet straps are just as good too, uh, as long as it's secure. So make sure you check your the rear straps of the trailer, you know, before you go. Uh, I usually check it again after I fuel up, uh, either with the car, the, the skis, or both on the way to the, to the lake or river. I check them again just to make sure. Also check the strap at the front of the bow of the ski where it attaches to the trailer. Uh, very important there as well. And then lastly, at the trailer, where you're connected to, to your receiver ball, um, always, always have a pin uh, going to, you know, with the latch that comes down. Usually on these trailers, right, they look all the same. Uh, you got a little latch that comes down. There's a hole in there. Uh, you make sure you put either at least a bolt, um, some kind of pin. Um, um, in my case, I have a lock pin, um, which I'll cover in a moment. But uh, that, and lastly, to make sure you check your chains. Uh, make sure your chains are hooked up. I have a couple times gone and I get to the water and my chains aren't hooked up. Uh, they're a safety device in case it comes off of the, the receiver ball. And uh, yeah, I was a little embarrassed, so it happens. Number two, uh, it's a very easy one, but uh, check your trailer lights. Uh, even if you're going during the day, you gotta have brake lights, turn signals, uh, lots of folks, they do a walk around just hitting the hazard lights and walk around. Um, I'm lucky enough uh, to either have someone with me or I have I check it when I'm still in the garage. Uh, so you can check your left and right and brake and you can see the reflection off the wall. Um, it's always good to, to, to check all those separately because you don't know, not always um, do they share the same circuit. So just because you left and right work doesn't mean your brake's going to work per se. So it's always good to, to check that before you go. Number three, uh, your trailer tires. Uh, very important, this is easily overlooked. I've overlooked it on accident and found myself in the side of the room with a blown tire. It's not fun. So it's always good to, to check your tires, you know, not just for, for the air pressure. Uh, check your DOT or your, um, your number on the side to see for the manufacturer, as well as you know uh, cracking. Um, the trailer tires are not very expensive. Um, you can get them done in an afternoon if you find somebody to do it for you. It's always good to, to make sure that, that, uh, that you're ready to go with your tires. It's very important. Um, in addition to that, man, but, uh, pay the money for a spare tire. Um, a lot of these trailer manufacturers do not come with a spare tire. Uh, they may have an option for a spare tire. Always do that. If not, um, they're really inexpensive to buy after the fact on Amazon. Um, I think I bought my spare tire at Walmart uh, a couple years ago and I got a spare tire carrier. I think mine was $25. Um, <clears throat> so it's good to have a spare, always, always have a spare tire. You know, you have one in your car. Why don't you have one for your jet ski trailer or boat trailer if you're, if you're towing a boat? Um, as well as making sure you have, uh, you know, the tire iron um, or the um, uh, a socket. Um, that fits not only um, your your lug nuts on the trailer, but the lug nuts for the spare tire carrier, because mine are actually two different sizes. So always check that before. I know eventually I'll put, I'll put um, the same size um, lugs for my spare tire carrier that holds my spare tire, um, but uh, definitely make sure you have that in your kit before you go. Number four, check your battery and your fuel levels. So I usually do it at the same time, um, hooking up the battery. 
Many times I'll actually disconnect a battery when I'm done if it's gonna sit for a while. If I know I'm gonna ride in the next week or week or two, I'll leave it connected. I do have a battery tender. Um, that's something in addition as your maintenance uh, to maintain your battery. I would highly suggest you invest in a battery tender. They're pretty inexpensive. I get $25, $30, I think. They do a great job of monitoring your, your voltage and keep it where it should be so you don't have a dead battery when you guys are ready to go to the lake and then you're frantically looking for somebody who's got a replacement battery for you. Um, when you, um, before starting, you know, it's kind of wiggle the wires when you're hooked, just make sure it's, um, it's relatively tight. If that gets loose, it can cause a problem. And many people think they got something really wrong with their jet ski when it's just a, when it's just a, a, a wire that's, that's loose to your battery. So make sure that when you start your ski, then you can check your, your fuel level or your fuel level, sorry, uh, to make sure you're good for the day. Number five. Uh, check your fire extinguisher. Uh, today, especially with COVID, with lack of supply, uh, many of the dealerships who are selling new skis are not supplying a fire extinguisher. So you got to make sure you get one. Uh, they're pretty easy to find. I find mine on, mine on Amazon um, for mine that I purchased, uh, what, three, four months ago. Um, fits right in there, no problem. I just pretty much Googled it, looked at some forums. Um, hopefully, I get a, maybe I get a picture of a, a part number for you. But uh, once you get one and you maintain that, you gotta, number one, make sure um, that many of them have an expiration date. Make sure the expiration date is good. Um, also too, just make sure there's always, the always, most of the time, we'll have a gauge on there telling you in green, you know, if, you're, if it's still charged well. Um, and lastly, um, what a lot of um, authorities do if they pull you over, they look to see if that little plastic strap or little dealio to, to keep the handle from from depressing and you know spitting out uh, spitting out the white powder, they make sure that that's uh, still uh, attached and not broken. So that's one thing to check on your on your ski just to make sure. It's happened to me before. I got pulled over. I thought I had a good one, and my I hadn't checked it in a while, and my thing was was broken. Uh, thank goodness he didn't write me up for it. But um, every time. I don't say every time. I've gotten pulled over a couple times in the water in, in my many years, but every time that's that's happened, um, they have asked us to to check for a fire extinguisher. So just keep that in mind. Number six, uh, ropes and anchors. Um, very very important. Um, if you're going to be docking, especially if you're going to be launching, and you have to you know tie off your ski while you go put your you go put your car and trailer away. Um, do you have the right ropes? Um, if you carry maybe a sandbag anchor, you have another style of anchor that works for you. Uh, make sure you have the right one uh, for your environment that you're going to. Um, it, but the most important uh, rope that you should have on there is going to be a tow rope. So you have some kind of tow rope if something does happen, because it does. Yes, on a new ski, it's not going to happen as, as often, but these are still machines with moving parts. Things happen. So you should always have a tow rope with you. If you have two skis, at least at one of the two skis, you, you have a tow rope. That's probably the most important rope you should have on your ski. Number seven, life vests. This can get overlooked, believe it or not. It happened to me uh, where I didn't check it. I got to the lake and I had no life vests. Uh, luckily in the state of Arizona, they have a really good program where they have life vests um, uh, given to it by the state, as long as you put them back. Um, but uh, yeah, not only to make sure you have your life vest, make sure you have enough life vests. Are there multiple people going with you? Do you have you know one ski or two skis? If you're three seaters, two three seaters, do you have six jackets? Um, pretty important. And also to make sure they're they're uh, um, U.S. Coast Guard approved, um, especially with kids uh, life vests. You got to make sure that they're they're approved because there are a lot of life vests out there that are good for the pool. They're not good for the lake. So just make sure that you that you see the lifeguard approved um, insignia somewhere on the on the life vest. Number eight, theft protection. I learned this the hard way. I had a boat stolen back in September of last year because uh, I maybe I didn't have enough theft protection. Even though it was in a locked garage, somebody stole my stuff. So the reason why I'm telling you is if if you're not going to be uh, having the uh, trailer in the water right where you're at, you're gonna you have to go back up the hill and park your, your car and trailer for the day. It's good to have some protection to, to uh, try to avoid um, getting stuff stolen. Uh, me personally, I have a wheel lock 
uh, on my jet ski trailer as well as a uh, well I have a tongue lock for when I'm, it's not in use um, because you can't hook up to your your receiver ball with it um, but I also have locks on my pins so I have pins for my receiver ball to my vehicle as well as a lock to the pin for the actual locking mechanism on the trailer that I was, I was talking about earlier can somebody still steal your stuff? Absolutely. But the, the real point of it is to try to reduce as much as the thief's efficiency as possible. Try to take as long as it can for them to actually steal it. Because if you have a bunch of stuff on your, on your trailer, more than likely they're going to go to the next one that doesn't have anything and take that. So theft protection is extremely important, especially if you're, a, if you're at a busy location. Number nine, legal documentation. This gets forgotten way too often. I've seen it. Um, I haven't done it yet, um, thank goodness. But uh, in my state, uh, I only need a copy of my registration um, for my ski, in the ski. Uh, some states you may need um, a insurance card of some kind, as well as some kind of uh, boater's class uh, confirmation before you can put a vessel on their waterway. Um, just make sure you have that on there, but check your local your local state or county um, laws and um, just make sure you have that squared away. I've seen that done before and bad things happen if you run into authorities that are very thorough. <laughs> uh, lastly, um, this has happened to me and it's super easy to check, uh, is your license plate. Make sure your license plate is still on. Uh, license plates... Um, in many states, I know in my state, they get stolen a lot because of the permanent registration sticker. Um, usually on a trailer in my state, you, it's just one sticker for the life of life of the trailer. Um, you don't have a yearly um, uh, registration like you would a normal vehicle. So they get stolen a lot. Um, mine, I found, um, I checked it before going to the lake and then after, you know, coming out of the water of the lake, my plate was completely gone. Um, I had a plastic holder from the trailer to the um, license plate and it was just ripped off, like just ripped. So yes, I ordered a, a metal one, got a replacement plate, uh, but before you go, make sure your license plate is on there. Number 10, research your location, uh, where you're gonna spend the day or spend you know, a weekend or a week. Uh, make sure you do some good research before going. It sounds stupid, but it, I've, I've seen it all the time where people don't do the research, they don't know what they're doing, and it's hard to have a good time when you don't, you don't have your ducks in a row on what needs to be done. You know, for example, you know, you, you know, where do you launch? If you go to a lake, do you know where to launch? How are you gonna launch? Are you got a four by four with some rough terrain, you're gonna be able to just dump it into to the water and leave the trailer in like I do many times? Or, or uh, you know, are you gonna have to use a boat ramp and then find where there's beach um, access for you. So <clears throat> checking a, checking online, you know, with your your park or whoever the entity for the what the, for the waterway. Um, usually they have relatively good websites you can check out. I love to check out Google Maps uh, where it's at. I can pinpoint where everything is at. So it's a it's a good idea to do that. Um, another thing is uh, you know. You want to make sure for, for the day, you know, how big the waterway is or how long you're going to be there. Do you have enough fuel? Uh, many times I can take trips. I don't think I can take any gas cans because I'm only going to be on the water for a couple hours. But if you're longer than that, do you need fuel? Do I need to invest in, in fuel jugs? Um, so that's another thing about another thing is where the park, are there fees to, to the park where you're going? What are those fees? When they collect those fees, is it cash only? Can you use your credit card? That's things that you probably need to think about. Um, I always try to carry cash just in case the especially you know remote locations they those machines can go down all the time if they're unmanned uh, we have also parts that, that they are manned by rangers so you know really think that through another thing is uh, is there Wi-Fi where, where you're going you know the, the simple Google search show if there's Wi-Fi for a couple reasons number one are you gonna be able to make emergency calls if if you're out there and how fast is somebody gonna be able to get to you doesn't mean you shouldn't go, but at least you have that, you, you know that peace of mind if there is Wi-Fi or even spotty Wi-Fi. Uh, the second is, uh, see a lot of people when they go to the lake or to the river, there's not enough Wi-Fi. Um, they haven't downloaded any songs to their phones. It's all um, on, online mode, not offline mode. So if you can only have songs on online mode and you don't have enough Wi-Fi, you can't listen to any music. 
So, and you can't download any songs to offline mode when you don't have any service. So make sure you, you uh, download a lot of songs to your phone if you have a speaker, if you're just gonna use your phone. So that's a good idea to see about Wi-Fi. Um, and then really lastly to that section is know, know your, the laws in your area. Don't be scared to pick up a handbook. Uh, every state or entity, whoever um, you know, licensed your ski, um, which you're going to have to do. I don't, I don't know of any dealers that does it for you. Um, most of the time they just, they give you what's called MCO and uh, you take the MCO to uh, either Game of Fish or um, your DMV, MVD. Um, <clears throat> but usually those places will have a handbook. Don't be scared to grab it. Um, I've done it and I've, and I've been jet skiing for, for many, many years. Um, and there's a couple things like, oh snap, I didn't know that. So, you know, for example, if uh, you're on a three person jet ski like mine, well, mine's technically, I mean, it's technically says you can do three, but it's good for two. <laughs> but if you have a jet ski, it's a three passenger and you're towing, so, you're towing your kids, three kids on that, that tube, there's a very good chance you can get a ticket for that. So for example, you, you, you know, you have to have legally be able to, whoever you're pulling has to be able to legally um, go on the vessel. So if this is a three seater, you're driving, you have somebody behind you with the flag and you're pulling one person, you're legal. Because if something, that person gets hurt and you have to put them on your vessel, they'll still fit on your ski. So it's just one example. So just, just you know, get a, get a handbook, you know, look online. You know, my county has a really good program. Just make sure that you know you're legal as well as knowing the capabilities of your ski. You know, they, they say it with stickers all over the place, you know, which are max low capacity and your, and your max person capacity. And most sit downs are three, you know, three passenger. That's pretty straightforward, right? But all skis will have a maximum weight limit as well. So, but those are the top 10 things. And I tried to make it, make it smaller, uh, like five, uh, but there's just too many important things to really cover with you guys. If you feel like I've missed something, let me know in the comments and uh, I would appreciate that. Uh, but this is kind of the checklist that I, that I go through. I think anybody who's just starting out and, and getting out there, you're gonna be super nervous. Don't be scared to have a checklist because you're gonna feel like a bigger idiot when things go bad, you can't enjoy your ski and your family's looking at you because you're the one in charge, right? So please let me know what you think in the comments. And again, thanks for watching. See you next time, bye.